Recently on Slash X Slash and other image boards there has been a resurgence of threads questioning about some sort of goggles called Dicianin dye goggles. Reportedly these are made with a blue dye, called Dicianin, and allow you to see people's auras and quote unquote electric fields, much like Gerlin photography. In this episode of X-Files we will analyze this phenomenon and try to come to a conclusion about the veracity of these claims. So. Let us first examine the history of this phenomenon. The inventor of the Dicianin goggles was Dr. Walter John Kilner. Kilner was a medical electrician born in 1847 who worked at a hospital in London. He was in charge of electrotherapy, which was then a method of mainstream medicine but is nowadays only used by alternative and pseudo-medicine due to its lack of empirical and experimental evidence of success. Anyways. In 1911, Kilner published a medical study proposing the existence of what he called the human atmosphere, or what is more commonly known as the aura. According to Kilner, this aura could help with medical diagnosis and prognosis of possible diseases and ill health or mood. Kilner attempted to invent devices which could be used to view these auras with the naked eye. Thus he created the Kilner goggles, in which glass slides containing alcoholic solutions of various dyes were used as filters to train the eyes to perceive light outside of the normal visible spectrum. According to him, after the eyes had been trained, one could simply dispense the goggles and view the electromagnetic spectrum with the naked eye. He did not recommend merely viewing the subject through these lenses, as many online now claim. Dr. Kilner wrote a book detailing his studies of the human aura in which he claimed to be able to diagnose a number of diseases and disorders by visualizing this quote-unquote auric activity. He also details instructions on how to construct and use similar goggles to view the human aura. Curiously enough, according to the text, the original copies of the book used to come with Dicean and cells for use by the reader. Other than excerpt in the book, though, no copies or records of these cells have been found. The dyes that he recommends using are extremely scarce and sometimes toxic chemicals, dicyanine included. Although a few replacements have been historically suggested, we must first inquire about the details of this chemical and whether its effects can be replicated. Dicyanine A, the actual dye used in these goggles, is in itself toxic to humans. A few chemistry companies sell it online at around $200 per gram, which is decently expensive even for research chemicals of the type. On the material safety data sheet it is stated that the chemical may cause eye and skin, respiratory and digestive tract irritation. However even after ignoring the issue of toxicity there is no special property of dicyanine dye that cannot be replicated using other chemicals. After analyzing the absorption spectra of the dyes analyzed in Kilner's book we can observe that most of them have a very similar range of absorption. So possibly there could be a manner to create these goggles without utilizing this toxic chemical, but in order to do that we must first verify whether the supposed mechanism that these goggles would be used for, which is seeing auras, is even possible and empirically provable. So let us analyze some of the claims made online and on 4chan on this subject. On one thread made in April 2018, the op says, quoting, These are Kleiner Googles, they contain a dye called dicyanin dye in liquid lenses. This dye is a more controlled substance than even nuclear samples, the people who have a free pass for legal LSD and other chemicals for research cannot get this, it was banned in the late 1940s after Operation Paperclip for one simple reason, it is the easiest proof of the paranormal ever. It allows anyone to see other people's auras, even watch it change as a person goes through deep meditation, and see other phenomena like how electricity actually moves and works. They then state a supposedly simple way to synthesize this chemical, however other than just listing a few ingredients, there are no instructions on how to actually synthesize it. Later the op posted a picture of the goggles they made using their method. You can see it on screen now. However other than this they do not really reply to any questions regarding how the glasses work. Some posters link to other supposed aura glasses online, but these are actually just blue tinted sunglasses so we can disregard those. Curiously enough these websites that claim to sell Kilner goggles all repeat the same rhetoric found in the off's post, 
about how it is a highly illegal substance even though it is possible to purchase dicyanine online quite easily. Other than this thread, there was a more recent one on slash sci slash in which the op actually describes a very detailed synthesis for this chemical. They claim that it can be done by any second year organic chemistry student for under 500 euros. And while these claims may be veridical, we have no way of knowing since as far as we can tell nobody has tried to synthesize this chemical and posted it online. The last post on this thread however is purely and verifiably false information. The op claims, once again, that dicyanin is more highly classified than LSD, heroin, and cocaine, even though as we have just seen it is available for purchase online for United States residents. They then claim that quote private researchers used dicyanin dye before the government locked it away in the 1940s. This gives an approximation of the time when the decisions were being made to censor all available knowledge so that new generations could be programmed into a belief system that was manufactured by the government and which had no relation to true reality. We can once again debunk these statements by simply showing it is possible to purchase this chemical online. As a last statement, the op states that Gerlin photography yields images similar to Dicyanin, but it is limited as it produces still pictures as opposed to a real-time continuous view. What is Gerlin photography? Well, it is a photographic technique used to capture the phenomenon of electrical coronal discharges. This is basically the same effect that happens on a Tesla coil, with sparks flying about and such. In Gerlin photography, a high voltage is applied to an object. Then a photograph of the electrical current is taken, using either a plasma photo plate or special filters to isolate the electrical discharges from the rest of the objects. Ever since its invention, many people have claimed that this method of photography can see people's auras, or measure their stress levels, or any number of other ailments. And although it produces very beautiful images, Kerlin photography is unfortunately not paranormal. One of the most common experiments to quote unquote prove this is to take a leaf and take a photograph of it before and after cutting it. Supposedly, the leaf will appear less markedly in the second photo because its life force is being drained due to the cut. However this is provably not true, as the variations in color and level of electricity is caused by the water content in the subject, which makes the air around the object become ionized when exposed to high voltage current. When the leaf is cut, its moisture will evaporate, causing it to conduct less electricity and appear less markedly in the pictures. Unlike Gerlin photography however which has been extensively researched and empirically analyzed, the supposed abilities of Dicyanin goggles have not really been analyzed in the scientific literature. The only real analysis we could find is in the British Medical Journal which attempted to replicate Dr. Kilner's experiments with the goggles but found negative results thus dismissing the claims of the existence of any aura. However we can still try and conclude whether these goggles would work or not by analyzing their supposed mechanism of action, which is detailed in Dr. Kilner's book. He states that the dye will train the subject's eyes to see beyond the visible light spectrum, which means in the infrared or ultraviolet, which is where he hypothesizes the auras to be emitted in. However, this is simply not possible. There is no manner to reprogram the human eye to see in different wavelengths without external assistance, which is what Kilner states in the book, the goggles are merely used to train the eye, after which they can be discarded as the subject will be able to see beyond the range of normal vision with their naked eye. As we have stated previously this is provably false. So, unfortunately, most of the claims made online about these goggles can also be said to be false. Other than that, the subject of these goggles is still very interesting and pops up quite frequently on slash x slash. So we will link a few of the more interesting archive threads, including the one that has instructions on how to manufacture this dye, if any viewers are interested and have the proper equipment. Of course there is also the possibility of purchasing it online and assembling the goggles. Anyhow, as for the actual effects of being able to see a human aura, these are unfortunately false. If the aura is real or not is a subject for another video, but these goggles probably do not do anything other than make your vision purple and distort it a little bit. 
however we would not like to completely discard the possibility of this phenomenon being real. Although it has never been empirically verified, we hope to see at least some analysis of the physical properties of dicyanine or the goggles in the future. We are not chemists however so this task must be undertaken by somebody else. As stated previously all relevant threads are archived in the description for the curious viewer who wishes to undertake this task. As for this analysis, it is over. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon once again.